What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop L. My name is Martin and today I am taking a look at a C63S estate. The reason being is that I have the M3 now for a year and I'm thinking about moving to something cheaper but maybe a bit more fun. So like a V8 and something for the family. So this is quite the obvious choice, the C63S estate. Now, this has been tuned like I would, and I'm just going to compare it to the GHM3 and see how they compare because you know this will be replaced by that stupid four banger of a C63 in 2023, or maybe even this year, 22. But maybe I should make the switch now to this V8. Now I can with low mileage and stuff like that, and with a fun tune on it. So what we have today is a c63 as a state edition one so that means we have all the red and black accents and we have all the cool optional extras so we have these amg performance wheels uh, with the fake center lock i i man i this really frustrates me a fake center lock on such an expensive vehicle now we have the carbon ceramic brakes as you can see with the golden orangey amg calipers these are 19 inch wheels 245 section front tires michelin pilot super sports which are lovely in this nice and hot weather we have a v8 by turbo badge right there again edition one mirror cap with that red striping there now at the rear we have 265 section tires which isn't even that wide for 700 newton meters of torque as stock but as i said this has been tuned so it's probably 800 or even more than that it really feels like that it's a really really strong vehicle this c63 s badge we have the chrome exhaust tips which i really really like gives it this classic mercedes appeal so we have some battle scars we have lost an eye so it's oh the t is nearly gone there which is a bit of a shame. So this is a 2016 model. Where's the release? Here it is. And I really like this. This is really a European muscle car in my opinion. And I just love the fact that they have made an estate version of this. Well, they've made a, a lot of versions because we have a coupe, we have a sedan, we have the estate and even a convertible. So here it is, the famous 4 liter V8 by turbo, stock 510 horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque. Now the owner, Stefan, has asked me um, to rate the performance because he has had it tuned, but he has never put it on a dyno. So he thinks it's about 600 horsepower. Um, and I guess he's probably right. And maybe, well, probably, it's more than that, but let's talk about that later. So let's get in. Now, as you can see, this is an edition one. We have the carbon fiber with the red weave in there, red and black, which is the theme of the edition one. We have the AMG performance seats with red stitching, diamond stitch, and an Alcantara steering wheel with edition one in there and a red 12 o'clock marker and the dials are again red and black as is the dash in leather so the exhaust has been modified a bit it has an h pipe so that means both cylinder banks are linked in the exhaust section that makes it an h so let's see what that sounds like go into race mode Yeah, that is quite a nice sound. I do believe that if you would put like 200 cell downpipes on this engine, you would have an even more throaty V8 sound. Now on load, the sound gets overthrown by the turbo pressure. So the turbos blow through the exhaust and they get rid of all the sound. Now this has been tuned, so it's more turbo pressure. That means more pressure through the exhaust, which means less sound. But 
if you like short shifted half throttle you don't have that massive turbo pressure and you get lovely lovely classic amg v8 sounds so let's see what that's like so let's put the 7g tronic into gear we are in race mode and esp is in sport mode let's go so you immediately get that v8 growl um, now this is a bit of a comparison to my m3 as i said now that's something i really miss that that, that sound low down the m3 sounds like a broken diesel in that rev area so that's a bit of a shame i think now i do have to say that the rear tires are nearly gone so we don't have that much traction today but it is good fun now the gearbox uh, this car is like handicapped because of its gearbox it's not really the quickest and best responding gearbox out there far from it it even upshifts when i don't want it to so let's put it into manual mode it is quick in the action but it kind of has an, a mind of its own and the downshift it's a bit laggy the engine is also a bit of a dinosaur but more so in a good way this is something we can never enjoy <laughs> in a few years Now I do really like the appeal of this car. It's a luxurious Mercedes with a big fat engine and you can just put the kids in here, the dogs, and it's like a... <laughs> it's like a Mustang GT500 with a boot. It's such a weird recipe for a car, but the weirdness of it makes it so much fun. In a dynamic sense, it can never compete with an M3 because it leans in the corners, you feel the weight. I mean, this is far from a sports car and the M3 is really capable in a dynamic sense. This really, really isn't. This is made for the road and to have fun on the road and nowhere else. Well, maybe this special bit of road called the Autobahn Go out of manual mode let the gearbox do all the work i mean on the autobahn this is an absolute weapon no four-wheel drive so the fun begins like after 100 kilometers an hour it's not like that e63 with the formatic plus or a glc 63 those are very very different way more modern better gearboxes Baby brother AMG, that's 290 already. Now luckily we have these massive carbon ceramic brakes, but we only have two of them. Uh, the weird thing is that you only get ceramics on the front axle. The rear axle is just steel, even though you also have those golden calipers on there. But for me, that's kind of a shame because if you order them on an M3, you get four big fat ceramic pancakes slowing you down and with this it's a, it's a bit of a letdown although brake performance is okay you know it won't fade because uh, most of the brake pressure and powers go to the front so they require the most brake performance but <laughs> the forward motion of this car man it's just those turbos kick in and they never let go wow so it did about 7.5 seconds 100 to 200 which is 
amazing. That's as fast as a Challenger Hellcat. So I guess it's a bit more than 600 horsepower, probably like 620, 630. So it's performing really, really well. And I am a bit jealous, I have to admit. This car has so many things that my M3 does not have. But my M3 has one thing this car should have, which is a manual gearbox. This gearbox is for me a letdown because if you get this engine in an AMG GT, you get that wonderful Gertrack dual clutch gearbox and in this you have this old clunky slush box and I would never have it. For me, that's a major, major issue. But if you look at Aston Martin, they also use this engine, but they link it to a manual gearbox. Now, AMG has never built an, a, a manual gearbox and I think as a ultimate goodbye to the C63, they should have made a manual one. That would have been awesome and I would have bought it immediately. So that was it for this C63 review. I mean, we've done 20, I think, but for me, this car never gets boring. I, I could do another 20, no problem. It's really the ultimate of this generation, you know. To be honest, we should compare this to the F80 M3 and not the G80. And in that respect, this is a lot more fun, a lot. And the RS5 and RS4s, they just, yeah, you cannot compare it to this. An RS4 Avant, no match for this car in any, in any aspect. So if you're looking for a fun family wagon, this is it guys. So if you want to check out another video, go click this one right here. Go subscribe to the channel by clicking right here or go check out the reviews playlist. Bye guys.